State machines are a common design module used in games to help manage different states within a game or software. State machines are very widespread and not only organize your game's control flow, but also make debugging easier and code base scalable. But the question remains, what is a state machine and how do we make one? Let's first go over what is a state machine. Say we have this setup. We have a player and this player has several functionalities, like being idle, moving, and attacking. Note that alongside that, we can also accept user input. In the world of state machines, we can simply store all the functionalities of said things into their own respective states. So the idle animation would happen only if we're currently in the idle state, whereas the running animation or movement itself would happen if we're in the running state. Here's the question for you. Where would we store the attack logic or functionality? That's right, the attack state. OK, now that we have all the states, another problem arises, which is, how do we change states? Well, this can be answered in different ways. It can really depend on how you implement the state machine. However, we can still explore an answer for any implementation, which is conditions. In order to change from one state to another, we generally will have a condition. In the case of a player, which the user controls, the conditions will generally rely on user input. So here's another quick question. If we implemented a state machine for an AI, what would be a condition for an AI to change states? A, area 2D, B, raycast 2D, or C, animation player. While there isn't a 100% correct answer, you might have guessed that you would use an area 2D or raycast 2D to change states, and this can be correct. These kind of nodes can allow us to automatically detect things and be able to change states depending on what's happening around it. Now back to the original question, how do we implement a state machine? Well, why don't we hop into Godot and take a look at how we can do that using an example. All right, so inside of Godot, I just have a very simple platform setup with a static body. I have already set up all the animations for the animated sprite. So I'm not going to go through how to do that. If you want, I have some videos on that down below in my channel. So go check those out. And then in the script itself, I am just simply using the template so I can even reattach it. It's the basic movement template. And you can see here that here is my code. And now let's take a look at this code in general, because a lot of this allows us to do things, right? So what is, what is happening? Well, first we have gravity, we have the jump, and then we have movement. Now the movement and idle happen together, right? So we have the idle right here and the movement right here. Now, if I want to set up a state machine, what we can do first is first we can set up the actual states by setting up an enumerator. Now this is quite common, uh, and this is something that I wouldn't do but it is a simple way of putting it all into one script. Now, there's many other ways of implementing state machines, and I have a more in-depth uh, video down below that maybe I'll put in the description. Uh, so go check that out. Um, but the basic idea is that we will keep the current state of whatever we're in in this variable called state, and by default, I'm gonna set it to states, or uh, to the idle, all right? Additionally, we're gonna also load our animated sprite, so that way we can play some animations later. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all this right here, and I'm going to now call two different functions. These functions are going to be called handle state transitions and then perform state actions. The one will help us handle the conditions to change states, and this one will, that will perform the actions for us. All right, so let's take a look first at the handle state transition, and then let's just pass, and then what I'll do here is I'll also add the function perform states and pass as well, so I get rid of the error. Next up, the condition to change from idle to jump. If I want to change from idle to jump, you can imagine what I can do is simply add a input state. And we can do this by adding an input check. So if input is action just pressed, UI accept, then I will change my state to jumping. Now you might be wondering, why are we doing the velocity here? Why aren't we doing it here? Well, unfortunately, the velocity gain of a jump is only happening one time. It only happens when I click. So I can't be doing this in a delta function where it's called every frame. So we have to do it one time when I click the UI accept and that's it. So that is where I will do it right before I switch states. Or as I switch states, I suppose. Okay, now that is from idle to jump. What else do we need? Well, I'm going to need a direction so we can get this direction that we had before. So we'll get the UI left and UI right with a direction. Now, what I can do is very similarly to before, if direction is not equal to zero, 
what I can do is I can simply stay, uh, change the state to moving. Now, if we're in the moving state, that's where we can you know, do moving things. But what else? Well, we can also add an else statement or an if else statement where if we're on the floor and I'm not in the jumping state, then I can set my state to idle. Right? Because before you had an else statement, but that didn't really work because, well, what if I'm moving, but I'm in the air? I don't want to go into the idle state. That doesn't make sense. So we can check if we're on the floor and if we're not jumping. This helps us manage our states a bit better. All right, now additionally, though, inside of our direction, just a little bit of a little extra stuff for our actual player. Uh, we're going to flip the player if the direction is less than zero, and then we're going to set it back to false if it's more than one uh, or more than zero. So this is just to help us uh, with the direction of our sprite. All right, now the actual states. What about the actual states? Well, this is actually quite easy because what we can do here in this function is simply match the state. So what we can do is match the idle state first. Now, this one is pretty easy because there's only two things that we do. First, we can play the idle animation by doing animated sprite dot play idle. And then we can also move our velocity x to zero. Now we can move it towards zero, or we can just set it to zero, whatever you'd like. All right, now we have the moving state. Now you can imagine, and I would actually encourage you to pause the video here and try this yourself. What would you do if you wanted to add the moving state? Well, I would add the moving state as a match function here, and then we can add the moving functionality. Now, additionally, we would want to move. Now, there's a few ways we can move, but we do need input. Now, we can either do this, where we can store or re-get the direction, or if I wanted to, which I would maybe do, especially if I access this outside of the player itself, I would save the variable direction outside the function, remove this, and then we no longer need this, as direction is now going to be saved in the variable over here. And then we can take our velocity dot x and move it in the direction times speed. All right, and the last part we'll need is the jumping state. The jumping state, we don't have anything super specific, but we do have two different animations for this. So I can check to see if my velocity dot y is greater than zero. If it is, then I'll play fall. If it's less than zero, I'll play jump. All right, so let's take a look at our game and see what we get. All right, so now you can see that I have a fully functioning platform player that is moving. Now it has animation, it works just like before. But again, you know, state machines, the essential advantage of this is that it's more organized, things are all in its own function, and it's just a lot easier to manage, especially as we increase the functionality of our player itself. Now, I do prefer other methods of implementing a state machine, specifically because we're using Godot, there's some advantages that we can take big advantage of. Uh, but I do have another more in-depth video of that, so definitely check that out. And if you guys enjoyed this video and its explanations, definitely check out my channel, hit the subscribe button down below, like, share, and comment this video. It really helps, even if, uh, you know, you don't, you don't have any other ways of helping, just hit the sub button down below, like, share, and comment. Uh, additionally, I also have a subscriber list uh, for emails. Every Sunday, I send out a weekly challenge, which I think is pretty fun. And I try to make it pretty engaging and challenging sometimes. Uh, if you guys want to check that out, uh, the first link down below in my description will be the subscriber email list to subscribe to that. So definitely check that out. And yeah, hopefully I'll see you guys in the next challenge uh, in, the, in the future. So bye bye for now.